In this and the first video on energetics, we're going to have a look at some of the terms we use when discussing energetics in chemistry. So at GCSE, you've probably talked about energetics in terms of energy changes. So you've probably referred to things as the energy change that happened in a reaction. And that's fine, but there are lots of different types of energy change, which you might remember from early on in physics at school. So you um, might have talked about the energy change in a wind-up toy. When you wind it up, you give it potential energy. And then it transfers that to kinetic energy and sound energy. And so there are lots of different types of energy. So the energy change associated with temperature changes in chemical reactions are actually given a more specific term, and that term is enthalpy change. And the definition of enthalpy change is heat energy change at a constant pressure. So we're talking about heat energy changes here. The units of enthalpy change are important that they are kilojoules per mole. That's how we would say that. So if we were saying that out loud, we'd say kilojoules per mole. How many kilojoules of energy are released per mole of chemical that reacts? You'll notice that the symbol given for energy changes, in this case enthalpy changes, is delta H. So H is the sign at A level for enthalpy, and delta means changing. So um, in maths you may have come across dy by dx, and d is just the um, modernised version of the Greek letter delta, which is what this triangle is. So the, what types of reactions did you come across at school? So you might have come across exothermic reactions, which literally translates to out heat, and heat energy is given out of these reactions. So if you can imagine that you have your chemicals sitting there, and your chemicals, when they react, they're going to give out heat. So heat is going to come out of the chemicals and into the surroundings. Now the surroundings could be air around it. So when the gas burns in the Bunsen burner, the air around it feels hot, but it could be the solution around it. So if your chemicals are dissolved in water, then the water around the chemicals will be getting hot. The water isn't the chemicals that are reacting, so say when you've got sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid reacting, the water around them will be getting hot. So the chemicals themselves must be losing this energy. All these arrows pointing out from the chemicals, the chemicals are losing energy, and so we will find out that our value for delta H is going to be negative. So although the temperature goes up, the chemicals go down because there's this transfer of energy. So the chemicals lose it so that the temperature of the surroundings can go up. So the temperature goes up, but the delta H goes down. Let's have a think about some important chemical reactions. I, mean, I want you to pause the video and see if you can write an equation for the combustion of the fuel hexane. So remember that combustion is the reaction of that fuel with oxygen. So see if you can pause the video and write an equation. And there you go. Now if you've done the doubled up version of all of this, you're going to see later on in this topic why we always attempt to use these halves for these combustion equations. What about respiration? So remember that respiration is the reaction of um, sugars, glucose, in oxygen. What do you give off when you respire? So see if you can finish that equation off. There we go. There are two common exothermic reactions. What about endothermic reactions then? So in an endothermic reaction, our chemicals are going to need energy in order to be able to combine. So they're going to suck that energy in. They're going to take that energy in from the surroundings. So if you remember that the entrance is the way in, and this starts with the same letters, EN, and the exit was the way out, that was our exothermic, then this is going to take in energy from the surroundings. So the surroundings are going to get colder because they're having their energy taken away from them, and the chemicals are going to get more energy. They're not going to turn it into heat, they're going to take it into them and store it as chemical potential energy. 
So the delta H is going to be positive because they're going to gain energy. So here are a couple of important endothermic reactions. Let's see if you can work them out. So our first one is the thermal decomposition. Can you remember what that gives when it thermally decomposes? So thermal decomposition using the heat to break the bonds. So we've broken it up using heat, so it took in energy. And we've got calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And then our photosynthesis, where we take carbon dioxide and water. Plants take in carbon dioxide and water and convert them to glucose. And what other product? Can you finish that off and balance it? So photosynthesis being the reverse of respiration. These are two important endothermic changes. At GCC you will have also um, looked at how that energy can be shown in a diagram. Now you may not have called them enthalpy profile diagrams, but that's what they are called at A level. They're going to show us the reactants and the products, the delta H, which direction it's going in, so its sign, whether it's positive or negative, and its size, and they're going to show the activation energy as well. Now if we remember that activation energy is the minimum energy required to start a reaction by breaking the bonds. So the activation energy Ea is the minimum energy required to start a reaction by breaking bonds. We're going to start by looking at exothermic reactions. We're going to plot our enthalpy, which is H. So that's just the measures of enthalpy against reaction progress. measuring it against time but we don't want to have a linear scale for time we just want to say how the reaction progresses so we're going to go from our reactants and if it's exothermic where will our products be in relation to our reactants so our products will be at a lower energy because energy has been given out so we've got reactants and products now, can you remember from GCSE what you had to do now? So what you did now at GCSE was you drew this energy profile curve and it went up before it came down. Why did it go up before it came down? Well, it takes a certain amount of energy to break those bonds and start that reaction. So we're looking there. Now if we mark that on, that arrow must start at the energy of the reactants and go to the top of our curve and that is our activation energy. It is a vector quantity. So it has both magnitude, size, it has a size that tells me the number and a direction and it points up which means activation energy is a positive energy change. You need to put it in. And how would we work out delta H on this one? So our delta H goes from our reactance level and comes down to the level of our products. So it's the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. But again, it is a vector quantity. It has direction as well as magnitude. So we can see that delta H is negative. But we can also see that Ea, activation energy, is positive. Okay, so this is describing an exothermic reaction. There's a little sentence there that says once the energy barrier has been overcome, the net energy release will keep it going. So once you've lit your Bunsen burner, you don't need to keep lighting matches to keep the Bunsen burner alight. It will keep itself alight. Could you pause the video and see if you can work out how an endothermic reaction profile would be um, the same and, and how it would be different to the one we've already drawn? So there we go. The products are now at a higher energy than the reactants. So both Ea is positive, activation energy is always a positive value, you always have to put energy in to start, but delta H is also positive here. And 
you need to put energy in to start that reaction, but you're going to have to keep putting energy in to keep it going. 